Asking for accommodations at work can be super intimidating, but you know what makes it a lot easier? Coming prepared. That's why today we are gonna talk all about different accommodations that you can ask for at work if you're neurodivergent. Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to Neurodivergent Magic, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable neurodivergent content. So first things first, we can't talk accommodations without talking about disclosure. And disclosure can be so tricky. There are so many things to consider, like when to disclose, how to disclose, who you should disclose to. If you don't know, disclosure is basically telling someone, hey, I'm autistic or hey, I have ADHD. It's really hard to ask for accommodations without disclosing. So odds are you're going to have to talk about your disability or your neurodivergence at some point if you want to get accommodations. And this alone can be really scary because you don't know how people are going to react. Are they not going to have a clue what you're talking about and therefore really have no idea how to accommodate you? Are they going to have a lot of bigoted, old-fashioned ideas about neurodivergence? There's a lot of what-ifs when it comes to disclosure. And I'm not here to minimize those worries. What I am here to do is help get you through them. And the best way to get through them, I think, is talking about how to do this, really breaking it down step by step. So that's what we're going to start with here. Let's start with when to disclose. This is such a tricky question because a lot of people are tempted to disclose in the interview or even before the interview because you don't want to interview for a job, go through all of that stress only to get it and realize that they're not going to properly accommodate you. That's definitely the biggest upside to disclosing in or before an interview. You know ahead of time that this job is going to be accepting of all of you, who you truly are, neurodivergence and all. But obviously the big downside to this is that not every job is going to respond that way. Some people are going to have really ableist mindsets when it comes to neurodivergence. And disclosing in an interview could lose you a job. So let's talk about disclosing after the interview, once you already have the job. Obviously, the biggest upside to doing this is you make sure you have the job before you run any risks with having an ableist boss or ableist coworkers. You also give yourself more time to explain your neurodivergence. In an interview, there isn't always time to really explain the full breadth of autism or everything that goes into dyspraxia. But once you have the job, you can work these conversations in. You can sit down with HR and really explain how your neurodivergence affects you and how it affects your work. But there's a downside to this version too. If you wait until after the interview, after you've already gotten the job to disclose your neurodivergence, sometimes employers feel duped. They feel a little bit like they didn't get the real measure of you in the interview. And if they have really ableist ideas about neurodivergence, meaning that they think neurodivergence is less than or wholly negative, uh, they could even retaliate in some ways. Obviously, at the end of the day, you can't control every factor when it comes to getting and keeping a job. But there are some things that you can do, and that's what I want to talk about here. Your language and tone when you disclose can make a huge difference in how your boss receives this information. You need to sound confident. You don't want to leave any room for gaslighting or invalidation. You need to let them know that that's not their job. You're not here to have a discussion about whether or not you're neurodivergent. You're here to have a discussion about how your neurodivergence affects your work performance. However, I would also caution you from appearing too confident. This can actually give your employer the impression that nothing is really wrong and then they won't take your neurodivergence as seriously. If you're a little nervous to have this discussion, it's okay to let some of those nerves show. Just don't let them throw you off your message. Which brings us to language. When it comes to disclosing your neurodivergence, it's really up to you how much information you want to give. In some situations, you may be able to just say you're disabled and leave it at that and then ask for the accommodations that you need without ever having to actually disclose any kind of dis diagnosis. However, some places of employment actually require documentation of a disability and it has to be a specific disability that is recognized by the Americans with Disabilities Act. In a perfect world, this entire part of the video would be completely missing. It would be no big deal to disclose your neurodivergence because we would accept that neurodiversity is a beautiful thing. But our world is far from perfect and there are a lot of ableist folks out there who see neurodivergence as something really profoundly negative. And it's important to consider that when it comes to your livelihood. Okay, so let's assume the disclosure discussion actually goes well and your work is looking to accommodate you. What do you do then? The Americans with Disabilities Act recommends that you ask yourself the following questions. Number one, what limitations are you experiencing? 
Number two, how do these limitations affect your job performance? Number three, what specific job tasks are problematic because of these limitations? And number four, do supervisors or teammates need training about these limitations or your disability? Because if you go into that meeting not knowing what you need, you are far less likely to get what you need. And these questions can totally help you figure out what it is you need from your employer to do your job. Once you've spent some time with those questions, then it comes time to list out the accommodations you would like to receive at your place of employment. Everyone's accommodations are going to look different, but there are some common accommodations that people find helpful. For instance, headphones. Headphones is my number one accommodation request for almost every neurodivergent person. It helps limit distractions. It helps limit overstimulation. And overall, if you can wear headphones in the office, most neurodivergent folks are going to do a lot better. Another great accommodation you can request is flexible work hours. This means as long as you work your 40 hours, 30 hours, whatever you've agreed to with your employer, as long as you work the amount of hours, it doesn't matter when you work them, meaning you don't have to sit at your desk from nine to five. This is amazing for neurodivergent folks because it allows us to flow with our body's natural rhythms. If you really struggle to go to bed before two or three in the morning, you are not going to be at your best by 9 a.m. So if you can start work a couple hours later and then keep working past five o'clock to make up for those morning hours, then that could be a perfect arrangement. Another great accommodation that you can ask for is remote work. The past couple of years have shown us that remote work is absolutely possible and that people will still get their work done even not in an office setting. So hopefully most places are happy to grant this accommodation. Another really great work accommodation you can ask for is a specific mode of communication. If you do better with in-person meetings, request a weekly in-person meeting to make sure that you are getting everything done that needs done and you're understanding the team dynamics and all of that good stuff stuff. If you forget everything, unless it's documented in writing, then make sure all important communications are sent to you via email. And if you struggle with eye contact and you would really rather just have a phone call with your boss every now and again instead of an in-person meeting, you can always request that. Finally, you can also request neurodivergent-friendly software. This might be software that you have personal experience with, therefore making it easier for you, or there might be types of software that are just easier for neurodivergent folks to understand in your industry. This is really going to come down to a job by job basis, but there are a lot of different softwares out there. And if the one that your company uses doesn't work for you, you're allowed to look for one that works better and request it. If you have more questions about asking for accommodations at work, I highly recommend that you check out the Job Accommodations Network at askjan.org. They have so many incredible helpful resources, especially for specific uh, diagnoses and disabilities that are covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Tuesday with more neurodivergent content.